Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's really great to connect with each one of us this morning on the weekly mentoring hour. Let's pray and uh, we'll go ahead with what we have for this morning. So I want to request one of our students to please unmute and lead all of us in prayer. Pastor, I can pray? Yes, Pooja. yes, please. Yes, Pooja, go ahead. Yeah, Almighty Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Father, in today's morning, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for you have given us beautiful day, God Master. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father God, for all our teachers, Master God. Whatever they are teaching us, Father God, Lord, we receive in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father God. We pray for heavenly wisdom. A spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, help us, Master God, to listening to your word, Master God. Lord, touch our your Father God. Lord, prepare us, God Master. Thank you, Father. Let preaching, teaching, anointing flow, God Master. Thank you, Father God. Touch their lips, tongue, mouth, God Master. Father God, and touch all the students, Master. Those who are in camp, God Master. Those who are online, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We welcome Holy Spirit in this today's morning, God Master. In this time right now, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Because as your word says, without you, Holy Spirit, we can't do anything, oh God, Master. Help us, Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything. And we cover the blood of Jesus and we dedicate to you in today's class, Father. And we break every power of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, uh, Pooja. Uh, so as we all know, the Mentoring Hour is um, a weekly session that we hold where the faculty and the students, students not just from our residential uh, batch, but also those who join us online, uh, as well as e-learners, those, those who can make the time to connect can be on this call. And in each mentoring hour, we try and look at uh, a, an important subject that is relevant to our life as well as ministry. So this morning we will look at the subject called as legacy and uh, uh, students are welcome to ask questions related to this topic or if you have questions uh, which are outside of this topic but connected to uh, life and connected to ministry, please feel free to do so. So let me just go ahead and uh, share my screen and then we'll begin to share a couple of thoughts regarding the subject of legacy. Okay, I hope that uh, all of us are able to see the screen. Um, so this subject of legacy, uh, Firstly, I'd like to say that uh, our day-to-day -day lives have become so busy and challenging that uh, most of the times we probably are only thinking about uh, everyday activities and that's about it. There isn't enough time to think about other things. But we learn from uh, the Word of God and uh, from um, you know the lives of people around us that uh, leaving behind uh, something for people that makes an impact is is um, also something that God has called us for and designed us for. So what is a legacy? A legacy generally is um, a gift by will or something that is handed down from the past or it can be a lasting effect or a result. So when we define legacy, it is leaving something behind that is related to possessions, people, and principles. And obviously, uh, it is when we leave behind uh, something in terms of principles or an impact on people which is more valuable. Uh, of course, possessions also are valuable, but you know, uh, impact on people and leaving behind principles is definitely more valuable. And legacy has to do with um, you know our words actions and uh, choices uh, of today regarding legacy now when we look at it in spiritual terms we can have a legacy of faith so this means that we can pass on faith. Uh, there is an example of multi-generational legacy of faith uh, in 
the book of timothy when paul writes to timothy uh, he he says that you know the faith which was in his grandmother lois and his mother eunice uh, was now in timothy so that's very interesting because there was an impartation of faith uh, and uh, spiritual blessing if you will from the previous generations into the um, you know succeeding generations and so timothy carried the legacy uh, of his grandmother and his mother so some something for us to consider uh, today and this is not just a uh, uh something for us to consider only with regard to the family but even in terms of church you know the way we can leave behind a legacy of faith uh, for the the people that god has connected to us so usually when we speak about legacy we say that we must leave behind a legacy uh but how about considering living a legacy so a legacy in terms of making an impact uh over the lives of people need not be something that we look forward to only once we are gone even when we live a life um that is an example uh, a pattern of faith a pattern of devotion to god a pattern of excellence we can live a legacy which means that we can constantly make a positive impact on people's lives and we can inspire hope in them so um we we could consider legacy even in this way not just to leave behind a legacy but to live a legacy now the bible teaches us that we must pass on what god has given us uh, and so there are several scriptures i've just put down two uh, passages here uh, in in our slides uh, deuteronomy 4:9 where god uh, god says and teach them to your children and your grandchildren so whatever god gave the people he wanted them to be passed on to the children and grandchildren and similarly you know he he says um uh, there are other passages as well i'm not going to read through uh, each one of them but here's a reference from deuteronomy 4 uh, verse 9 deuteronomy 6 verses 6 through 9 So there is a definite command to pass on uh, what God has blessed us with. Now, when we talk about impacting people and um, leaving behind a legacy or living a legacy, there are there are spiritual things which can be passed on. Uh, but at the same time, there are other um, aspects related to life which we can pass on as well. So when it comes to spiritual matters. we can impart faith we can we can impart um you know the fear of the lord a fervor passion for the things of god we can teach uh, the the coming generations uh, about the word uh, we can teach them about worship so there are many aspects that can be covered as far as uh, the spiritual legacy is concerned and um, uh, the richness that god has given us we must be intentional to to pass it on to the coming generations and you know uh, hopefully it will impact not just one uh, coming generation but uh, you know thousands of generations uh, uh, you know if if that's it's um, possible so apart from uh, these things character and virtues uh, are also what we can carry uh, and these things can make an impact on the people around us you know the kind of people that we are the choices that we make aligned to the word of god uh, that can constantly inspire people to walk in the ways of god uh, and walk in righteousness uh, and of course we can pass on knowledge um there there's lots of wisdom that we gain over time as we live our lives uh, you know and as we walk with the lord which can definitely be passed on uh, to people around and these are practical things and as far as doing church is concerned uh, as far as um, you know uh, the workplace is concerned or or um, several other things that we are involved in uh, wisdom regarding systems and the kind of culture that uh, people can people the the kind of culture that glorifies god the kind of culture that works uh, that makes an impact these are all um, again you know things that can be passed down 
Now, apart from this, definitely when it comes to possessions or wealth, uh, richness, uh, this again will be a blessing to the next generation. No, uh, uh, thank God that as He works in our lives, He blesses us, He causes us to thrive and prosper. And um, as we move forward, we, we can leave the the coming generations um, richer in a sense, you know, uh, it, it may have to do with resources, with wealth, with opportunities. Uh, we can also empower uh, people around us. And uh, this is a definite way of raising up leaders. So empowering them, uh, mentoring them and taking people alongside us. Uh, and, you know, when we talk about leaving behind a legacy, I mentioned earlier that uh, making an impact on people is more significant. So when we invite people to journey together with us, even when we are gone, you know, there, uh, there, are, there are those who have learned, uh, hopefully learned from our lives and um, you know, grown personally as well. And they will continue to make a difference uh, in all that God calls them to. So empowering, mentoring and taking people along is um, very crucial. Uh, in terms of leadership, so when we lead well and um, uh, let people see uh, how we wade through difficult seasons, um, you know, when when we walk in courage and uh, we go through breakthroughs, all of this is is um, you know being observed by people around us, and we can leave behind our testimonies, we can leave behind our uh, uh, experiences, which will strengthen others to be pioneers in the fields that God is calling them in. And uh, when it comes to impacting people, relationships is uh, another aspect to consider. Um, so it, it's um, so important for us to help people experience um, you know, victories, help people experience breakthroughs, uh, help people, you know, maybe even when they experience failures to navigate through failures all of these experiences uh, will make an impact on them and uh, give them memories for life, which will help them as they continue to journey with God. So as, um, you know, individuals, uh, our, our impact on people is what is most important. And as we continue to accomplish things for God and... Uh, make achievements uh, you know there's a, a very famous saying that that goes like this it says the ceiling of one generation becomes the floor of another which simply means that when we reach our heights um, that gives an opportunity for the next generation to start off at that level and so they can make progress from a higher level they don't have to begin uh, at scratch the way that we did so one must be intentional to leave behind a legacy for the next generation. Uh, so one other very uh, practical thought that I wanted to add um, while talking about legacy is to keep recounting the blessings of God. Please keep recounting our experiences with the Lord. We know that, uh, you know, Joshua, Joshua, uh, when he was leading the people, there was this one incident where God asked them to, um, you know, stack stones to remind them of what the Lord had done for them. So in their uh, lives, that would have been a memorial, but at the same time, that would be a testimony for the coming generations of the breakthrough that God had given uh, the, the people, Joshua and the people. And so in similar ways, memorial stones in our lives. So as we, uh, you know, live our lives uh, in our families, uh, there, there could be children, there could be young people. Uh, so we must leave behind records of our walk with the Lord. So this could uh, simply mean recounting our salvation story or the various testimonies that um, we have with God. Uh, it, it could mean that, you know, we, we document our experiences so that people can read through them and be blessed. They can be inspired or, or uh, you know, just 
ensuring um, or some form of art, just ensuring that we record and document God's goodness in various ways. Uh, if, even when it uh, comes to the prophet Samuel, uh, there was a time when you know, he took a stone, he named it Ebenezer, and he said, thus far has the Lord helped us. So a uh, memory of what God has done in one's life. Okay. Now, uh, Psalm 78, uh, there is a passage uh, from verses 4 through 8, again, which encourages us to, to share what God has done in our lives. I'll quickly read Psalm 74, verse 4, and we'll wrap up in a bit. It says, we will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. So uh, we must be diligent in passing on um, knowledge and uh, faith and um, our testimonies to the coming generation. There are biblical examples of people like Moses, uh, David, Paul, who've all left behind legacies uh, aligned to their calling. You know, Moses, uh, we could say that he was an exceptional leader, a deliverer, um, a prophet. Um, he left behind a legacy about leadership. When it comes to David, his life of devotion, his uh, military prowess. Um, when it comes to Paul, again, you know, his missionary fervor, the epistles that he wrote, the leaders that he raised up. So uh, a very impactful life that made a difference for many generations and continues to make a difference. Uh, other examples of people who've left behind a legacy in our very generation, um, you know, one could talk about Steve Jobs in the field of uh, technology, where he's uh, a visionary entrepreneur. Um, and uh, he was always creative with the way he he did things in, in that arena. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr., and we continue to speak about the difference that he made through the civil rights movement and uh, 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 visionary once again, and his legacy is that of um, seeking justice and, uh, um, you know, working for justice. Uh, and just a few more things as we close off. Uh, there are certain pillars that we must never forget uh, in our lives as, as far as leaving behind a legacy is concerned, and that is to maintain strong character, to be intentional about making good choices aligned to the word of God, um, maintaining godly conduct, and being mindful of uh, consequences uh, based on our choices. Now, a few things for us to consider I know we all want to leave behind uh, a legacy, um, but then the next generation must also be receptive of what it is that we want to leave behind for them. So when we look at the story of Absalom, he was a rebellious son, and we know that there, there was um, uh, resentment in his heart towards his father uh, because you know, his father didn't support him. So you know, there, there was this gap between the father and the son. And, and so I just wanted to bring this thought of being relational and understanding uh, the next generation, being there for the next generation. Otherwise, we can do all we wish to, but the next generation may not be receptive. And uh, uh, there is something called as a de-churching phenomenon that, um, you know, people are talking about. Um, there's a, a book written and, you know, it, it said that uh, from the 1990s, about 40 million people in the United States uh, have continually left the church. And there is a, there is a trend that is continuing uh, and there is a steady decline. Now, what are all the reasons for, for the decline? Um, again, you know, people say that... Um, not being relational, not being relevant as a church. So these are all things that we could consider and uh, look at it in our own context and ensure that we are making every effort to stay connected to the next generation and encourage them. Uh, and of course, you know, use uh, all forms of technology and developments um, and be intentional about passing on a legacy uh, and remember that legacies will not happen overnight. Uh, legacies are built over a lifetime. Um, and uh, we must be committed to personal growth. So a few thoughts there regarding legacy. Uh, and now we'll just open it up for questions. Please feel free, um, students. 
you may post your questions here on the chat or please feel free to unmute and uh, ask them as well. All right, so um, as we come to the chat here, Rin uh, is asking, can a legacy become a tradition or belief? Yes. So, uh, yes, uh, Rin, I do believe that uh, a legacy can become a tradition, hopefully a good one. Um, like for example, a simple example would be family prayer time as a family tradition. Now, if that is something that is practiced over time consistently, it'll become a tradition in the family. And you know, the following generations may also continue to do the same thing, which makes a positive impact on um, their families. So yes, it can become a tradition uh, or a belief. And if it has a positive impact, then that's good. But if there's something that is is uh, not aligned to God's word, then you know that's a tradition or belief that we must be concerned about. Uh, I want to request the other other faculty to also share your views, if you'd like to add to what I just said. Please feel free to unmute and speak. Okay. Pastor Selena, would you like to add your thoughts? Uh, yes, Pastor Nancy, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, I think we uh, legacy can become a tradition. Uh, if you look at it in the Bible, we see that, you know, um, the faith values and practices were passed down uh, through generations, uh, like, for example, the Passover or the Sabbath. Um, also, God uh, telling, you know, um, Abraham to, you know, uh, teach his uh, children's children, Moses, uh, the generations to come. So I think, yes, legacy can be passed on uh, to generations, the traditions, yes. I hope that helps. Rin, hope, yes, thank you, Rin. Thank you for confirming. And uh, Rin is asking if there is such a thing as a bad legacy. So I know that generally when we speak about legacy, it's uh, uh, associated with a positive impact that's left behind. Uh, but I guess if you know a certain generation has made bad choices, then it can impact negatively, and uh, we could call that, uh, you know, bad legacy. And it can continue to, you know, uh, impact several generations, which is why we must be careful about our choices and the consequences that follow. So, Rin, please let us know if um, you would like further explanation to that. or if you're fine with it. So we'll uh, move on with uh, Mavai's question here. He says, what is the difference between legacy and reputation? Um, so legacy is uh, generally something, you know, very powerful um, that we leave behind. And, um, you know, as we've stated earlier, it, it could have to do with uh, principles, values, the kind of character, uh, you know, that we have or possessions or even people. So when we consider Paul, we uh, associate Timothy, Titus. So they've, they've, they are a, a testament of the powerful life of one person that has impacted, um, you know, other people. Now, reputation would be a uh, as far as I'm concerned, it'd be a simpler uh, thing wherein uh, it's the opinion that others have about us. It may or may not be true, but uh, that's the perception that people have about us. So that is a reputation. I hope that uh, helps, Mavai. Please let us know if 
you know you have a follow up question to that and pastors um, faculty members please feel free to add to what we have just shared all right thank you thank you mumbai thank you for confirming um yes so we move on here uh, shmi says is leaving a legacy behind should always be significant yes uh, shmi so a legacy as we've defined it is impactful and which is why it has to be significant uh, it is something powerful that we um you know we we leave behind so it must be significant um, maybe yes, i'll add to that yeah i mean yes please the uh, question is uh, significant in the sense should it be something big or huge and uh, if that's the question then the answer would be not necessarily you know just uh, even a simple for example timothy's mother and grandmother when you look at them paul paul recognizes the depth of faith they they have uh, there is no record that they did anything big but they left a legacy of faith which eventually came into this young man timothy and timothy did a significant work for the church but the legacy that he inherited was you know something very simple it was a legacy of faith but yet it was so important so if uh, significance is you know is it something big famous rich lot it doesn't have to be that it could be something as simple as simple faith that one person has like the grandmother had the mother had which one then was passed on to Timothy uh, but Timothy was the one who did you know something big but the legacy was very quiet very you know in some ways we could say you know, nobody other than a few people may have noticed it but yet it was very important to start that thank you pastor thank you for clarifying uh, and shimi continues to ask uh, says should it always be very famous and spread all over the world uh, i think pastor ashish just answered that question uh, and shared how uh, in in the case of um, you know timothy's mother and grandmother faith was passed on and that uh, timothy was the one who then went ahead and made the kind of impact that we read about in scripture so i hope that helps uh, shimi coming to biju's question here pastor selina would you like to add to that oh uh, yes pastor nancy uh, just wanted to say that uh, uh, significance in god's view what matters most is not uh, how the world measures significance and but how god sees us is you know uh, he values faithfulness love obedience even in uh, in small things uh, which might not be too significant for people uh but can be of great value in god's eyes uh just like uh like to mention two examples for example ruth uh you know she was not a famous leader but left a powerful legacy of loyalty and faith her decision you know to stay with uh, her uh, mother in law uh you know her devotion to god um and you know the becoming an uh, an ancestor of king david and jesus and also uh, another example is you know the widow with who gave the two small coins we uh, is mentioned in the bible we still read about it we speak about her in mark chapter 12 um, she didn't do something great in worldly standards but yes jesus highlighted her act as uh, highly significant in uh, god's eyes so uh um, so she's remembered for someone of you know like pastetti faith uh, and sacrifice that she made just like to add that i hope it helps thank you thank you uh, pastor selina um that's true we we'll move on to the next question here by biju achan kutti he says when we talk about legacy should we consider seniority or the qualities or both especially when it comes to church settings um so biju i can think of timothy once again um though 
he he was younger and uh, paul does address that matter but he says he tells timothy not to um not to fear uh, and to continue serving the lord uh, because he is called you know in in this manner to oversee the church of ephesus so it's not necessary that uh, at all times we consider seniority um it depends on you know uh, the calling of god and um, as you pointed out qualities as well so there are times when uh, because of the qualities one is able to live a legacy or leave behind a legacy as well i'll just open it out for other faculty to step in as well please feel free to add your thoughts So if I may ask uh, Pastor Ashish, Pastor, would you would you have uh, any comments on Biju's question, please? Mm. Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned it. So yeah, uh, Biju, first and uh, most important, of course, is other qualities, and uh, then you know, uh, of course, experience, and over time, we're able to do a lot of things. Right? So if you look at what Paul taught Timothy in First Timothy chapter two, verse two, he says. The things you've learned from me, uh, commit that to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So uh, the, 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 the thing that Paul is looking at is faithfulness. Right? Commit it to faithful men. That's a quality. And they then have the ability to pass it on. So uh, in, when we talk about legacy, I think first the character, the, the life of the person, uh, speaks much louder than age. Um, you know, even in that same episode of Timothy, First Timothy 4.12, he says, he writes to Timothy, he says, you know, don't let anybody look down upon your youth, but you be an example uh, to the believers in love and faith and purpose and purity and all of these things. So uh, setting that example, that life that you live is more important than age. Uh, and then, of course, we are not neglecting age. If people are living a good life through time, uh, over time, you know, of course, you have you earn credibility, you earn the respect of people, uh, you uh, hopefully grow in wisdom, uh, and so then that adds to it. But number one is the qualities. Then come the number of years. Is how I look. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts. And Biju, we hope that it has addressed your question. Please let us know. Sure. Thank you. So if you have any further questions with regard to the subject of legacy we can ask but if you have any other questions as well you can feel free to post it here in the chat or unmute and ask please so even as we are sharing the thought that's coming to my mind is that Every single one of us uh, can leave behind a legacy. Each one can live a legacy. And as Pastor has been sharing, Pastor Ashish and Pastor Selina also mentioned earlier that uh, the way God looks at our impact is what is um, what should be our motivating factor. So you know, one may not have a big name or uh, have uh, an achievement connected to their name, but if the Lord, uh, you know, has called us to things, and then we are living it out faithfully, uh, His His um, uh, praises are what we must live for. So, just a thought there. Coming back to our chat here, Rin says, "Can we say that the gospel is a legacy?" Okay. 
Yes, the work that Jesus has done um, is impactful, it is significant, uh, and it is a continuing you know, legacy in that sense that is uh, saving souls and uh, you know, drawing people into a relationship with God. So in that sense, yes, I feel like we can uh, use this term legacy for it. Uh, but again, you know, I'll uh, open it out to our pastors. Uh, Pastor Selena, please do let us know what your thoughts are with regard to Rin's question. Uh, thank you, Pastor Nancy. Thank you, Rin, for your question. Pastor Selena, not able to hear you. Can you hear me now? No. Oh, I don't have my headset. So we can hear you. Sorry. Okay, maybe I can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, thank I you, Pastor. Uh, yes, we can say that, you know, gospel is a legacy, uh, uh, you know, because uh, the gospel is a good news of Jesus Christ, his life, death, resurrection. Uh, and, um, you know, that has been passed on um, from generation to generation, uh, beginning with, uh, you know, uh, the apostles and uh, it continues through the centuries. And we know that it is a, it's a powerful transformation transformative message that has, um, you know, brought many into the kingdom of, um, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. It's also, we know that it's a legacy of, uh, or a message of redemption and the reconciliation that we have received um, uh, through Jesus Christ. And we know that it's like a spiritual inheritance and that, uh, you know, when it's received by one person in the family, it's passed on to others in the family. It impacts the lives of uh, the individuals. Also, we know that it has impacted the lives of uh, many communities, tribes, uh, villages, and has impacted uh, nations. So, uh, yes, gospel is a legacy because uh, it, uh, you know, carries uh, eternal values and, uh, you know, it can, it's, it's shared and it's passed on from generations to generations. So we see that even uh, in the Old Testament, we see that um, and we also see that in uh, the early church and we also see that in church history, um, how the early apostles and the early church passed on the teachings and um, what they received from Jesus Christ and how they passed it on to uh, the others. So it's also a legacy of faith, um, uh, the doctrines and the faith that, you know, uh, was preserved through the centuries, uh, even the, the word of God that was uh, kind of um, a threat and was kind of, uh, you know, uh, Many tried to burn the Bible, stop the printing of Bibles, but we know that, you know, it, uh, uh, the legacy of faith and our doctrines have been preserved through the churches, through the centuries and history, and it continues to shape the lives of many of us as believers and as Christians today. I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Selena and uh, Rin, I hope that uh, that has addressed your question. We'll uh, go ahead with Natasha's uh, question. Natasha Samuel, she asks, what about negative legacy like Gideon's ephod, which beams a snare? Okay, my apologies. I don't know too much about, uh, you know, the consequences of Gideon's ephod. So if uh, one of my colleagues can help, that would be great. Um, yeah, Natasha, we, we see uh, you know, uh, uh, things in the Bible which uh, became a snare, uh, like Gideon C. Ford, uh, and we can also remember the brazen serpent that Moses raised up in the wilderness, that God used it at a particular time. Uh, but later on, Israel started worshipping that brazen serpent, which, of course, was the wrong thing to do. So, um uh yeah so in both these cases uh uh something that uh, it, 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 sorry in, in moses case he actually obeyed god he did a good thing uh, god used the brazen serpent at a particular time but later on the good thing that god was using at a particular instant became an object of worship 
uh, and it became a distraction and actually you know a reason for God's judgment. In Gideon's case, Gideon, uh, you know, in some way went astray. Uh, you know, made himself made this uh, you know very expensive effort, something he's not supposed to do, uh, which which was a wrong thing. We can even think about King Solomon, though he had so much wisdom, his the end of his life was disastrous. Uh, and so like that, we have examples. And I think that's where um, those who are followers must exercise discernment. Uh, that means, uh, um, you know, uh, we need to discern what are the things we must receive as a legacy and continue, and what are the things that we must reject and say, these are bad things, we should not continue, we must discard. And so that discernment must be there uh, whenever we receive something that has been passed on uh, to us or that is left behind uh, by an earlier generation. So you bring up a good point. Thanks for that. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, thank you, Natasha, for that question. Uh, Mavai uh, says, just a thought, if I live a godly life, working faithfully, my purpose, can it translate to legacy, though I'm unconscious that I am working out to one? Um, so the answer is yes, Mavai, as we've been saying earlier, a faithful life, a simple life, um, even though some of the people that we spoke about earlier, like uh, the mother and grandmother of uh, Timothy, they may not have consciously thought of leaving behind a legacy of faith, but it happened. And so even if we are unconscious of it, as long as we are faithful, uh, walking with the Lord, I'm sure that, you know, we are working out a legacy and it, it will impact people. I hope that helps. Uh, we'll go straight to Jacken's question here, where she says, the Bible instructs us to keep telling of the goodness of our Lord and who he is to us, to our children and grandchildren. But these days, children are not really receptive to hear this. So do we wait for them to ask or should we keep telling them no matter what? How can we be mindful of what they are going through? At the same time, share what we are supposed to as elders. Okay, so a couple of questions there. Uh, and I think uh, Pastor Selena uh, would, you know, have much to share on this subject. Uh, Pastor Selena, would you <laughs> able to take up Jackin's question? Thank you, uh, Jackin, for your question. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Um, yes, I think uh, the Bible uh, encourages us to pass on the knowledge of God. Uh, to our children, to our children's children, our future generation. Uh, we, we read that in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, where it instructs us, you know, that we need to teach God's command very diligently to our children when we sit in our house, when we walk on the way, when we lie down. Um, also, Psalms uh, 78 tell, tells us, admonishes us that we need to uh, tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. Uh, while, you know, it's important to keep sharing, it's also important to uh, discern the right moments uh, when we can share, uh, you know, not forcing any conversations when children are not in a mood or not receptive, uh, then that cannot be very productive. Um, uh, like, you know, uh, I think Proverbs, it says, uh, you know, word fitly spoken is like apples, uh, apples of gold and uh, settings of, I think, silver or gold, I don't know. So the timing is very, very uh, important and how we approach the matter. But, you know, uh, today's children have a different way of learning and connecting. And so we need to find out creative ways in which uh, or how we can introduce spiritual truths um, that will, uh, you know, kind of connect with them, that will be of their interest. Uh, for example, just, you know, when we are watching something on YouTube or watching uh, an ad or a movie or see something, you know, we can just 
you know, break out into a discussion and, uh, you know, ask them what they think about it and then communicate biblical principles that make a big difference. So maybe I think not arguing or pressing our point forward, but just discussing, hearing what they have to say, what uh, what is their opinions. And I think uh, the other important thing is not to have long lectures, just, you know, share personal stories, examples, you know, of uh, what happened, of, you know, you heard a testimony, what happened in your life, what happened in somebody else's life, uh, you know, and um, just sharing about God's goodness, faithfulness, how he has seen you through, just through simple testimonies throughout the day, or what happened in the week, or what happened in somebody else's life can just um, uh, help them to even encounter God, to trust God, to put their faith in uh, God. And uh, yeah, just encourage open uh, dialogue, just discuss with them, you know, uh, present what the Bible says, um, and then, you know, just uh, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. Because I think children, even though they can seem very defiant or uh, uh, arrogant at times, they listen, uh, it can work in their lives and hearts, and it's the word of God, word, God's word is powerful. Uh, and it will accomplish the purpose and the reason for which it goes forth. I hope that uh, helps Jack in. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Uh, yes, so Jacqueline says, sure, thank you for sharing. Thank you, Pastor. So yes, Jacqueline, it is important for us to um, teach the children. And we know Proverbs 22 verse 6, you know, it says, train up a child in the, in the way that he should go and he will never depart from it. But as Pastor Selena mentioned, we look for teachable mo moments. And uh, we also try and understand the generation and the methods that, you know, they will be receptive to. So thank you for that. Coming now to Rin's question. She says, can people can also become a legacy, right? Um, yes, Rin, people can also become a legacy. Uh, just the way we mentioned Paul, he trained up many, many leaders uh, from you know, var various uh, cities. And uh, they were the ones who continued the work um, long after Paul was gone. And so, yes, people can be a legacy. And just I'm reminded of uh, a statement made by John C. Maxwell, uh, who, who speaks on leadership. And he says, a leader's lasting value is measured by succession. So uh, it's when there are people who can continue the work that one has started that we say, you know, they've left behind a legacy. So, yes, people can become a legacy. And I hope that addresses your question. So we're almost um, moving towards the end of today's session. So if anyone has one final question, please go ahead. If not, we can pray and wrap up for today. Sure. So let's um, pray and close then. And I want to request uh, one of our students to go ahead and pray this morning as we conclude the mentoring our session. Lord, we are very, very grateful that you would gather us to hear from your voice, from your mouth. Thank you for the wisdom that is shared, the counsel of the Lord that is shared. Thank you, Lord, that you have opened an opportunity for each one of us to impact somebody in this generation and the next. Thank you, Lord, that we can become phasos for the things of God. We are so, so grateful for the sharing that was shared today. We are so, so grateful, Lord, that uh, generations continue to love the Lord and to know the Lord because you have put that word of faith in all of us. So we thank you and we bless you for that hour. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Muvai, for leading us in prayer. And uh, we close off our mentoring hour. Uh, have a wonderful day, everyone. 
God bless you. And uh, we'll meet again in uh, the mentoring hour next Thursday at uh, 8 a.m. IST. God bless you all. Bye for now.